spoken that there will be deliverance, healing, and blessings in the name of Jesus. And at the end of this world, we ask that our life will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus. And that we have cause, O oh God, to glorify you at the end of our life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. 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 Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to praise God this morning because it's not by our might, but the grace given unto us. Today is the last Sunday. Some people are dead. Some people are nowhere to be found. But God gave us the grace to be here, so we will praise the Lord. We will worship God this morning. Modupa Moria Nuba Modupa Moria Nuba Tori Kishak Bogbo in your Kishak Bogbo in your Moni Kishak Bogbo in your Loria Nuba. Mo shokwe tori ari anugba He mimi mo asokwe ese tori ari anugba Tori ki ise gbogbo eniyan Mo ni ki ise gbogbo eniyan lori anugba Some people are dead this coronavirus is, I don't even know what to say, but God kept us alive. We are so grateful to God this morning. We are so grateful on behalf of the shepherd, the choir, the mom, the dad, the children of this church. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord, for all that you have done for. to be before God. Please don't close the door yet. Are you happy to be alive? 
if you are happy to be alive, I want you to chant a thunderous hallelujah to God. Hallelujah! May God's name be praised forever in the name of Jesus. Let us have a seat before God. God is good all the time. Please, I want you to get your Bible. It, it does not matter how much of the Bible that we know, we still need the Word of God. Let us get our Bible. Let us open our Bible. Let us walk with God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The theme for today's word is atonement, a pathway to the kingdom. Can we say that? Atonement, a pathway to the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of the things that I know about God is this. Since the time that Adam has lost that kingdom that God gave to man. Because what God did in the beginning was to put man in a place where he's not supposed to toil, he's not supposed to walk, he's just supposed to enjoy and feel God. Since that was lost, God has always tried to find a means to bring God to man. Hallelujah. Because what was actually lost in the beginning wasn't just the good things. It was that we lost our relationship with God. Because then God will come and man will see God, will talk with God, will relate with God, will enjoy with God. But once man was set out of the presence of God, it becomes a hard thing to relate to God. Because man became covered with sin. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. So let us quickly open to the word of God. And I want somebody to read the lesson of today. Numbers 28. I want a good reader to read from verse number 26. So that we can know that whatever we want to talk about today is actually coming from the word. Let's go, please. On the first fruit. Yes. On the day of the first fruit. On the day of the first fruit. When you present to the Lord an offering of new grain. Yes, go to keep reading. During the festival of the week, uh -huh. hold a circuit assembly. One thing that God wants men to do when it comes to offering either sacrifices or service or worship before God is to always hold a sacred assembly. Uh -huh. And do no regular work. And do no regular work. The understanding of this is when you come to the presence of God, you have to let go of the regular. Can you say to somebody, let go of the regulars? Let go of the regular. What that means is when you begin to bring in the things that you want to do, the things that we want to achieve, the places that you want to go to, what you want to buy, this will cluster your mind and then you cannot be in the same realm as a spirit. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Present a bond offering of two young bulls. Uh-huh. One ram. Just keep reading. And seven male lamb a year hold a, as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. With each bull, there is a grain offering of three tenths mm -hmm. of an ephra. Yes. Of the finest flour mixed with oil. Yes, keep reading. With a ram, two tenths. And with each of the seven lamb, one ten. Go to it, eleven. I'll go to thirty. Go to twenty nine. And and with each of the seven lamp. Yes. One ten. Yes. Include one male goat. Yes. To make an atonement for you. Yes. Offer these together. Yes. With with their drink offering. Yes. In addition to the regular bond offering. Yes. Go to the last verse. And it's grain offering. Yes. Be sure the animals are without defect. Be sure that the animals are without defect. Can you say to somebody without defect? Without defect. Some version says without blemish. Uh huh. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 
Please sit down, man. What we want to concentrate on today is the word atonement. Because we've already treated this chapter like 500 times in this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I want us to concentrate on atonement because the purpose for the sacrifice at that point in time is so that they can atone for their sin. And you only make atonement when you want reparation. When you want the sin that you have committed to expire. Hallelujah. Because if there is still sin, no one can see the face of God. And so God told them in the times of old how they are supposed to bring these sacrifices to God. But the point that I want us to pull out is this. Four things are supposed to be present when you bring that offering to God. Four things. The first thing is you have to have the priest. You have to have that individual. You have to have the altar and you have to have the sacrifice. Hallelujah. And there are three qualities that is needed to make sure that this offering is acceptable. The first thing of it is there should be no customary work, which means there should be no regular thinking. The thought of who I want to marry, what I want to get, how I want to increase my place of work, how I want to get this, those thoughts should be out. And the second thing is in verse 27, where I said the, it has to be pleasing to God. Hallelujah. And the last one is verse 31 when he said it has to be without blemish. Now, the problem with the atonement of old is this. If you bring your offering to God and the priest is not there, there's no way that you'll be able to offer that before God. The offering is not acceptable unless there is a priest. Even when there's a priest and there's no altar, the offering is still not acceptable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say you now have the priest, you have the altar, you have everything. And there's a spot on that animal that you have brought. It is still not acceptable. Because the offering has to be without blemish. Let's say everything is even great. And you offer that sacrifice and it's not pleasing to God. That means the offering is still not. So there's so much rule for the atonement of old. So much rule to the level that when they make sacrifices and they go home and they don't see the change needed, they, that's when they will sometimes know that the offering was not acceptable. Hallelujah. But what God was actually telling them was different. Yes, the sacrifice works. It brings them closer to God. It gives them the grace to appear before God. But what was the purpose behind this atonement? The purpose was to make them relate to God without hindrance. But we discovered all through the Old Testament that even with all of this, there were still many hindrance before the children of men. Because it got to a level that man believed so much in the atonement that they would have prepared the ram, the goat, and everything, and then go into sin because they already know what the repatriation is, what I'm going to give to take away the sin. And another thing is, with all of these sacrifices, it does not bring man to the level of the spirit because what was lost in the beginning was the spirit man. Hallelujah. And we all know that God is spirit. Whoever worship God has to worship God in what? Spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Psalm 51 that we read every Sunday. 16 and 17. Somebody. Psalm 51, 16 and 17. Yes. Please, somebody. In sacrifice. God does not delight in sacrifices. Oh, I will bring it. If God delights in sacrifices, sacrifice will be all that we need to bring for God to be pleased. Uh-huh. 
you do not take pleasure in bond offering. God does not take pleasure in bond offering. That is why even with all the things that the Israelite did, they still lack God. Offer the bull of ram today, you will still lack God. Offer the bull of uh, the blood of anything, you will still lack God because God is what spirit. Uh huh. My sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit. The sacrifice of God is what a broken spirit. Uh huh. A broken and a contrite heart. A broken and a contrite heart, which means your sacrifice does not matter, but what you have in you is what actually matters to. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See So, because of all this, this atonement, which wasn't working for the Israelites, God has to send his only son to this world. And the purpose of Christ is this, to awaken man to become the spiritual man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask yourself? Sometimes we say it in Celestia. Sometimes that thing sounds to me like um, a me, something that you can go in and go out and go in and go out and go in and go out. Like the spirit is something you just go in and go out. If it's something that you can go in and go out, that's a gift. But if it's the spirit of God, it has to dwell completely in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ogba ye de nini, bobi a woma le katin yo. This thing with God is when man lost that Eden, God is preparing a paradise, which is the lost Eden for man. How do you now go to that paradise when you are still a physical man and God is spiritual? And that is why I pity a lot of people that come to church based on the physical things. They come to church if they don't have a candle in their hand, it's a problem. They come to church, there's no prophet or prophetess that jumps around and knock the word to give their messages, it's a problem. If they come to church and something is like maybe they're giving everybody something and they could not give it to them, they believe, ah, they did not receive their blessing. And this is not God. Hallelujah. What is the book of John? John chapter 4. Let us read from verse 19. We, we kind of move into the second lesson. John chapter 4. This is the woman that was by the well. This woman was speaking with Jesus. And the woman said unto him, uh-huh. I perceive that you are a prophet. Uh huh. Now, our fathers worship in this mountain. Uh huh. Then the Jews are saying the Jerusalem is the perfect place of worship. Uh huh. Keep on reading. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. The hour is coming. When you don't have to go to a mountain, when you don't have to stand before any altar, when you don't have to stand before any priest, for your praise or prayer to be acceptable. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because many worship what? Something you do not know. Uh huh. You have to know what you worship. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. The true worshippers would worship the Father in spirit and what? In truth. Hallelujah. Sinama. And that was why when Christ died, when you get time, you can read it. Matthew 27. One of the first things that he did when he cried out was that the altar, the covering of the altar was torn into two. The altar was exposed. The sacrifices and all that was exposed. And that took man from being physical to a spiritual offering. Hallelujah. 
Imagine what the word of God in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When Christ came, what he did was to bring the spirit to man. So that that spirit that was lost in the garden can come into everyone. Everyone in this world, if you are a believer, you need to have the Holy Spirit. If you are without the Holy Spirit, you are in vain. Lie, see me. Without spirit, vain is man. So it does not matter how many sacrifices you bring. If you are without spirit, it is all in vain. John 16. Somebody should reopen John 16 from verse 13 to 15. Because what the Holy Spirit does is it gives you power. That means the authority that was lost of all is given to everyone that has the Holy Spirit. So you don't have to even be a priest. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. Once the power of the Holy Ghost comes into you, do you know that you don't need a priest? Because once the power of the, once the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power. You receive the authority to make things happen on this earth. But many still lack the confidence and the faith in God to know that they have the Spirit to declare for it to come to existence. Uh-huh. Yes. Another thing that this spirit does is, is would begin to guide you. In the times of old, the priests would, are the ones that guide the children of Israel. They tell them when to eat, when to sleep, when to walk, when to not to walk. But once you have this Holy Spirit, it will begin to guide you. Uh-huh. It will not speak on its own. Yes. Yes. This spirit has to glorify God. So which means if you're a person and your life does not glorify God, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. Can you tell somebody glorify God? Glorify God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Hey, Jack, I can drop it. Thank you, ma. Sit down, ma. The first man in the Old Testament runs after atonement. We'll dig everything. We'll make sure the animals are separated, not spots, not the ones are spotless, blameless, without blemish, and all this. Make sure the priest is there wearing the right apparel, standing in the right way, you know, burning all of this in dimensions unthinkable. But even with that, they still couldn't have internal life. They still don't have the Holy Spirit. Because what they have was prophet. It's a gift. It comes. It goes. Even Elijah has to seek God. Would have to go many miles to find God. So which means the atonement of old is not actually working. Because the spirit man has not received the spirit of God. But when Christ came. And as a believer you need to invite the Holy Spirit into you. Because if you are just believing in Christ. And you don't have Christ's spirit. It is in crisis. That will not be a case in the name of Jesus. And that was why the book of 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, we are the temple of God. Hallelujah. So as a temple of God, imagine every believer, you are a temple of God. You are a priest of God. So you are God yourself. And which means you don't need many people. Many of us don't even believe that. As a celestial member, you can come into the church, bow your heads, pray to God, and have the belief that your prayer is answered. Now, if, you, if the pastor is there to say grace, fine. But if you call on the pastor to say grace and the pastor says, I'm busy, believe that your prayer is answered. Don't you understand that sometimes when you are calling on somebody and they say no, that means the power of authority for that prayer is not even given to them. But do you know many of us will be pulling them? Holy Church, you're forgetting about me. Pastor, you're forgetting prophet, you're forgetting about me. I pray that God gives us understanding in the name of Jesus. So the purpose of the atonement is to bring us back into the kingdom. But it wasn't working for the Old Testament. So how do we get 
back into the kingdom. You know, there's one thing to have the spirit of God. But it's another thing to walk the walk of God. Let us go to the book of John that we just read. Let's read 34 and 35. Book of John chapter 4, the lesson. Anyone read 34 and 35? Don't you have a saying? Yes. It is four months until harvest. From verse 34. You're reading 35. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent Christ. Uh huh. So your food should be to do the will of God and to finish the work that God has given to you. I want you to think, what is that work that God has given to you? Just think within yourself. What is that work? What is the purpose? What is my purpose in this church? If God can keep you alive till today, that means he has a purpose for you. What is that purpose? Uh-huh. Yes. But many of us, instead of finding a way to do the will of God, to finish this work, work of God, we're thinking, I still have more time. I'm just 28. When I'm 30. I'm just 50. When I'm 55, I'm just 70. When I'm 80, who tells you you are going to see all those years? Hallelujah. Uh huh. Yes. Open your eyes. I want to tell you with everything that is happening in this world now, I wouldn't be surprised if the world ends today. Now, the question is let's say the world ends before 12. With the things that I have done, with the things that you have done. Do you think we will be able to enter into that new Eden? Hallelujah. With the things that you have thought about this morning when you wake up. With the things that you have thought about before entering the church. Even with some things that you have thought about while in the church. Imagine you'll be in the church and you'll still be thinking negativity. Hallelujah. With the death of Christ. Christ has atoned for us. He has brought us to him as children, not as slaves. The Old Testament was a slave thing. The New Testament was as a child. But we're still behaving like a slave. Because we're still working in the atonement of hold. See that, mommy. God bless us in the name of Jesus. So, First Peter 2.5. And then I'll be able to tell us some things that God wants us to do. The sacrifice it says expected from God. First Peter 2, chapter 5. Because we're still speaking in towards atonement. First Peter 2, 5. Any reader? Please read. Yes. You are like a living stone. Can you look at somebody that said you are a living stone? And look at another person that said you are a living sacrifice. Uh-huh. You are built into a spiritual house. I want you to understand that. Every one of us, we are God's cornerstone. But God wants to build us. You know, there's difference between when you set a stone down and you build the stone to a house. That is how we're supposed to grow. Many of us are still like that cornerstone. Not built into a house. So God wants to build us to become his own house. Uh-huh. To be a holy priesthood. Can you look at somebody and say, you are God's holy priesthood. So when I say, who are God's holy priesthood, it is all of us. Some of us are just privileged to be um, shepherds, pastors. But everyone is a priesthood before God. Because once you are brought in to Christ, you receive the power to become son. And that makes you a prince. In God, and that makes you a royal priesthood. Uh huh. We are now to offer what spiritual sacrifice. Can you tell somebody spiritual sacrifice? So, everything that we are supposed to do is supposed to be attached to our spiritual life, whether it is an offering, whether it is a worship, whatever it is, it has to be spiritual. Don't just bring things to God. 
Don't just offer praise to God. It has to be spiritual. It has to come from that spirit man, not just any man. Uh huh. It has to be pleasing. It has to be acceptable to God through what? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just see that man. So how do we do this? How do we flow from being just that cornerstone that we are in when we receive Christ to become a house of God, to becoming a throne of God, to become an household of faith? You have been atoned for. But how many times do you want Christ to die for your life to get better? I'm going to tell you four sacrifices that is needed as a child of God to become great in God. Number one is the sacrifice of submission. Sacrifice of submission. If somebody has Romans 12.1, that is something that we all can read. I know Bible scholars can just read it, but I don't want to do that because... Romans 12, 1. Sacrifice of submission. Yes. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and what sisters, in view of God's mercy, the mercy that you enjoyed of being alive, uh huh. You have to offer your body to as a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. Hallelujah. See that man. The first thing is sacrifice of submission. You have to submit yourself to God. Many of us cannot even do that. You have to put your time, take your time, take your admission, take your possession, take your ears, your mouth. Take your sexuality, your mind, your emotion and attitude and just give it all to God. Because these are what causes blemishes in our life. If you let your emotion run your life, your life will be in ruins. If you let your possession run your life, it's going to end in vain. So all we have to do is submit all of this to God. Your everyday life, your sleeping, your eating, your going out, your coming in, just give it to God. If we can do this, then the atonement of Christ will not be in vain. We'll become a household of God. Have you ever wondered why Peter and Paul grew to a level that when they walk, their, their shadow was healing? It's because they surrendered everything to God. They don't have a thing of theirs. Every word they speak is God's word. Every place they go to is a place that God wants them to go to. Do you even invite God to anything in your life at all? When we want to start a business, we call the first thing we call is a prophet. We don't even talk to God first. I mean, the first thing you have to do is, God, I want to start this project. Speak to me. If God doesn't speak to you, then you can take the next step. Many of us would have been spoken to by God, but we would rather give the privilege that God wants to give us to another person so that that person can take the glory. That will not be our case in the name of Jesus. So the number one thing is submission, uh, sacrifice of what? Submission. So let's go to number two. Sacrifice of utterances. Sacrifice of utterances. And this has to do with our praise, what you use your mouth for. Hebrew 13, 15. I want somebody to open that. Hebrew 13, verse 15. And another person, maybe in the choir, to open Psalm 19, 14. So somebody from the church, Hebrew 13, 15. Choir, Psalm 19, verse 14. Sacrifice of utterances. Can we say that? Uh-huh. Yes. You have as a person, you are alive. You have to continually offer what? Sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise. You wake up, praise God. You come in, praise God. It works for you, praise God. It doesn't work, praise God. You eat, praise God. You can't eat, praise God. But that is the problem. 
when we go into one little challenges, we want to start blaming God. God, I, I went to church last week and you're doing this to me. Like God owes you. See that man? Many of us talk to God like God owes us some, some things. With all the things that I did for the shepherd, how oh, I took care of the shepherd and you're still doing this to me. Like God owes you. We ask our life that somebody owes us something. Psalm 19, 14. May this word of my mouth. May the word of my mouth. And this meditation of my heart. And the meditation of my heart. Be pleasing in your sight. It has to be pleasing. See that man. Every word that comes out of my mouth has to be pleasing to God. Imagine the time that you're cursing your brother out. You're cursing your sister out. You curse somebody out at work. Are those pleasing to God? You will be out there, you use F word, M word, Z word, A word, D word, whatever word that you can use. But then you go to church, you act as if you are the holiest of holy, like you never even do any of that. Are those words pleasing to God? The same thing that they did of old. That's what we're trying now. God gave them a way of atonement. They misuse it. Now another way of atonement has come to us. Are we trying to misuse it? May that not be our case in the name of Jesus. So the first one is the sacrifice of submission. And the second one is sacrifice of utterances. The words of your mouth has to be pleasing to God. And let us go to the third one. is the sacrifice of harvest. Sacrifice of harvest. This has to do with your giving. 2 Corinthians 9, 11. 2 Corinthians 9. Let us read from 11 through to 15. God is enriching you in every way. Can you say, can you say, I will be enriched in every way? Can everybody point to me and say, you will be enriched in every way? We will all be enriched in every way in the name of Jesus. I will just, I will just try you and I say that you did it. Let's go. <laughs> when God enriches you, your generosity is supposed to go to some other so that they can praise God through you. Imagine many of us that have been blessed and we can't be a blessing to others. God that gave it to you and you can't give to others. Do you want God to give you more? Uh-huh. When you give to others, you are not only supplying their needs alone. Sometimes we think I'm just supplying the needs. I mean more basan wole, if it more basan wo motu, if it more bofun, if it more fun ya well lunje. If it's not for me, this this family will not eat. You think that is the situation? That is not the situation. Uh huh. Yes, yes, mommy. Uh huh. You lost. Hallelujah. Yeah, read from just you can start again from eleven. Yes. Yes. So that your generosity, it is so that that family can praise God on your behalf. Do you know when you do good things to some people, they will go into their room and praise God on your behalf. When they praise God on your behalf, do you know what the angels of God, the host of everyone will be doing? Pouring some new blessing into your life so that you can do better. Uh-huh. It is, you know, the person will be filled with so much expression. Ah, thank God for this person. Thank God for the life of this person. Thank God for the life of this person. And it's flowing to the hearings of God. And the more God hears that, God is pleasing to you. God will continue to bless you. God will continue to enlarge your coast. Many of us are akagom. Our hands is all tied together. The things that we have, we cannot give. So to receive becomes a problem because there's no way that you will receive when your hands is closed. And some people will say, uh, am I supposed to do good to my... If you get home, please read that. The one we just read is read from 11 to 15. But I want somebody to open Romans 12, 20. Some people will say, do I have to do good to my enemy? You know, we all feel we have enemy, people that we know doesn't like us. And so when they need help, we want to deny some of them. 12, 20, yes. On the contrary, can you say if your enemy is hungry? Uh huh. What did the Bible say? How many of us can do that? Somebody that just cursed you out, 
or did something evil to you, and you see the person in need, and you give help immediately. Ah, many of us would have, even with the fact, be like, I, I, I would never in my life, in my life, talk to him again. So even when things is happening, we take our eyes off it. But God is saying, when your enemy is hungry, what do you do? Feed him. And by doing that, what happens? Yes. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Give him the best of your drink. Let him drink it. Uh huh. In doing this. Hallelujah. There's the purpose of doing good is diverse. When you do good, God will become the enemy of your enemy. That's the point. So the sacrifice of harvest. God has given every one of us a good harvest. Some people think it is until they have a billion or a zillion dollars. Your ten dollar can help somebody. Your one dollar can help somebody. Your two dollars can help somebody. Become a blessing to others and God will become a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. And the last one is the sacrifice of love. The sacrifice of what? Love. And there's no love without doing good. You know that, right? Love is your doing good. So the sacrifice of love. Hebrews 13, 16. Hebrews 13, 16. And do not forget to do good. Do not forget to do good. good. You know, the Bible knows that we can forget. I want you to understand why some words are written. It's because the Bible knows that we can do what? Forget. When the person do us harm, we can forget. Even we can forget a whole person. Am I lying? We can forget a whole person and say, you know what? I'm torn. Torn. And then we will erase them off our, off our mind. But God is saying, do not forget to do Good. Uh huh. And to share with others. And to share with others. Uh huh. For with such sacrifice, God is pleased. When you share with others, when you do good, then God is pleased. Now, let us look at that word, which means if you don't share with others, if you don't do good, then God is not. It is the Bible now. So, when God is not pleased, how do you want to receive from Him? See that, ma. Our loving others must be without hypocrisy. Can you say that to somebody? That means when you say you love me, it shouldn't be because of my look or my status or because we are close, we are family, or because there's something that you want to get from me. It should be without hypocrisy. And one thing that God knows is the word can squeeze you to become evil. And that was why the Romans 12 to make us understand that when you're being pushed, sometimes things will happen. And would, it can be anger, it can be emotion, it can be pain, it can be suffering, it can be challenges. And those things will just push us to want to become evil. The book of Romans 2, 12 says you don't have to conform. Do not conform to this world. Hallelujah. Many of us, when, let's say somebody doesn't like, say something wrong to me now, and I don't like the person, then you have some group of people that don't like the person also, just because of that. We want to take other people's responsibility as our own responsibility. One of the things that I learned from my dad is this. We, were, we will be in a church, and people will be saying something to him. I mean, these are words that, you know, I'm... Within my blood, my veins, I'm getting really furious. But one thing I understand is never to come into that situation. Because that is his own cross. Can you look at somebody and say, you will have to bear your cross. So don't make somebody's hatred your hatred. My shepherd doesn't like him. I don't like to act like him. My daddy hates him. I have to hate him. He's not the friend of my friend, so he's the enemy. We have to share love because God is love. God does not know you before he died for you. He died for you for free. 
without without asking for anything whether you want to worship him or you don't want to worship him he has already died for you it is your choice that will make you either to see god or not to see god hallelujah the word is coming to an end i'm telling you it's fast approaching the things that we are seeing in this world right now most of it has never happened before the things happening in this world now that we have little children that can that is not up to a 10 year old that can say you know daddy i know i was born a man but i think i'm a woman and they, and everyone in the society we accept is a woman that's the world that we live in right now and we are if we are not careful it's going to get to a level that these kids if they are not well trained are going to be the one pointing their parents out for sacrifice when the time comes that will not be our case in the name of jesus hallelujah that is why you have to show love starting from your home not just uh, don't be my mom used to, uh, my wife used to call somebody i need a job and i tell her don't 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 call the person there because that means you're saying this person is only good in the church and whatever you pronounce is what will come to be when you begin to pronounce it to somebody's life, the person is only good in the church. Then that means the person would only be good in the... Because from our mouth to God's... Especially when it has to do with somebody that is close to maybe our children, maybe somebody that we have authority over. Hallelujah. And that is why there is nothing. I pray that God help me. I will not use my mouth to cause anybody that I'm blessed. Because for what purpose would that give me? There's so many things that I do that God is supposed to be mad and he's never mad. He loves me. He continuously loves me. Why would I be mad at somebody that I don't have power over? Hallelujah. I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Below. Can we open that in? In 27. Let us read the English version. I'm about to bring this to a close. In 287, the English version. Yes. Ye brethren, come and worship who? Jesus. Don't come and worship the pastor. Uh, many Many people will be in the church doing the sermon and they will be talking, 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 talking instead of listening and assimilating. And then when the service is done and you ask them what did they speak about the word? Um, 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 um. Hallelujah. Come and worship God. Uh huh. Huh? Pounder within your heart. That is get a rethink. Bring towards yourself a loneliness of heart. Open yourself up. Uh huh. Because salvation only abides in what? God. Not, not in man. See that man. Salvation only abides in God. And God is spirit. Which means you have to worship in him. That's it. So let us forget about all those sacrifices. Embrace God first. And then those sacrifices will be acceptable. Don't put the cart before the horse. Put the cart behind the horse. Because when you put the cart before the horse, you're not going anywhere. Let us open the memory verse of today. Hosea chapter 6 verse 6. And I want to think about this all through the week. Hosea 6 6. I don't just want to read it off as I can. Hosea, we can't find it. After Daniel, before Joel. Hosea 6.6. 6. I want us to open it. I would have read it. It's something I can read out to that. Hosea chapter 6, verse number 6. If you can find Daniel, it's the book after Daniel. That's taken. Yes. Yeah. 
For I desire mercy, not sacrifice. God desires mercy, not sacrifice. Uh huh. And the acknowledgement of God. God desires the acknowledgement of God. Sinama, I want us to think about this all week. How do you acknowledge God? Do you acknowledge God when you wake up? Do you acknowledge God when you sleep? Do you acknowledge God in your words? If we can do this, the atonement that Christ has offered for us will not go in vain in the name of Jesus. If you are not ready, you cannot be with the Lord. That is why God told us to prepare our house. You have to prepare your heart. You have to prepare your house. You have to prepare your children. Those that died yesterday, their time has come. Those that will die today, their time will go. What about those that are tomorrow? I pray that God help us in the name of Jesus. Let us bow our heads before God and ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask that the power of the Holy Spirit will come into you. The power of direction. That power of direction. That it will come into you. That power that was lost by the priest of old. The power of authority. Ask that it will come into you. Ask that your being on this earth will not be voided. Tell God to speak to you. What is my purpose on this earth? Father, give me the understanding to know the things that I'm supposed to do in your house, in my family, so that my being on earth will not be purposeless. And ask that the signs of greatness will follow you as you worship God. Speak to God wherever you are. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let us go on our knees while we meditate on the word of God that we've heard. Jehovah. Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, Almighty and Everlasting Father, we have listened to you and even within myself we can tell that we have failed you. But we are asking, O oh God, that you, the atonement of sin that you have made on our personal self, on our individual self, on the church, will not be voided in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit needed to do things your way, not our way. To open ourselves up, be submissive to you, so that our utterances can be yours, so that our praise can be yours, so that we can love others and be able to give to others the way you want us to give. Father, bless us with it in the name of Jesus. Father, when this word will come to an end, because we know it is fast approaching, what's the purpose of we being blessed and we can't even enter into that kingdom? We ask the Lord the grace, the spirit, the understanding to get into that kingdom, to be able to be with you at the, end, at the end of our life. Bless us with it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the answer prayer. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray it. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Oba. Sister Victoria, you want to help us? Or oh, somebody. Ibu <laughs>